Hi there! In this tutorial I want to show you how to generate procedurally this sort of rock formations. I think they look pretty nice and cool, and I have discovered a few very interesting tips and tricks about using Houdini while coming up with this setup. As you can see you can generate the infinite amount of formations by choosing different seeds for uh, the setup. You can select the number of rocks that you will generate and the radius of the formation. Very well, so let's get started going through the whole setup. So I begin with a sphere that I elevate a little bit from its default position so that it will be lying on the ground. I choose its type to be polygon and I increase its resolution to 14. Next up I create a group that in includes all of the points at the very bottom of the sphere. To do that I go to the top bounding and select enable and uh, choose the size of the box like so. So that it would select just the points at the very bottom that are lying on the ground. I am going to use this group in the future to make sure that the bottom of the rock is flat so that it looks like it's lying on its flat surface on the ground. Okay, so the next thing I do is create a mountain node which generates this sort of noise. I decrease its height a little bit so that it wouldn't be too crazy and I decrease its frequency as well. Uh, the larger the frequency is, the crazier shapes uh, of the rocks it will generate and uh, if it's too, too small uh, the rocks will end up too round and not interesting. But I recommend experimenting with these parameters until you get the results that you like. So next up I create a soft transform node and I select a group that I have created just over here and as you can see I set its scale to zero and increase its radius so that it uh, flattens out a rock a little bit. Basically it starts with the points at the bottom of the sphere and scales it down like so. The larger the radius the flatter the rock will, will be. Uh, for me the value of 3.5 worked quite well. So now that we have this sort of rock it's kind of uh, too uh, well, it's too round, it's too smooth, and it doesn't look very much like a rock. So the next thing I do is to create a fuse node, and basically what it does, it merges the points that are close to each other, based on the distance parameter. And the larger the distance, the fewer planes of the rock it will generate. Again, you can play around with this parameter, but I'm pretty happy with 3.5. It creates this sort of a rocky surface that consists of several planes. So this is our basic rock. What I want to do next is to add a little bit of resolution and a smaller scale noise to this thing. And I'm going to use a very fun and interesting trick here. I'm, I'm going to use a ray node that projects a sphere onto the surface of the rock. I didn't know about this node before and it's pretty pretty fun and cool thing that Houdini turns out to be able to do. Check this out. So basically it takes a small sphere that I place at the center of the rock and as you can see it's a small sphere with very high resolution and now I can project it on the surface that I have uh, generated like so. Look at how beautiful it is. It's pretty fun and cool. I didn't know you can do this. And the important thing here is that the sphere needs to be inside of the rock's surface because if it's going to be outside it's not going to work very well. It's going to look like like so. Oops, I mean like if it, uh, it's a bit outside of the rock it will not project on the rock on the rock correctly. But yeah, so this allows me to create a rocky surface with flat planes but with a high resolution and a pretty uniform resolution as well. So aside from this node, there is one important and interesting trick that I have figured out and uh, uh, this trick is about placing the sphere at the center of the rock procedurally because uh, the noise uh, that is generated with mountain can create some pretty crazy shape. Uh, sometimes a uh, rock will be too deformed and it and when I in the future copying ma making different sized and different uh, a lot of different copies of the rock sometimes it, its shape was too crazy and uh, the sphere ended up outside of its fur uh, outside of its surface and it uh, generated all sorts of weird crazy artifacts. So to overcome this I have used the expression called centroid and basically what it does it takes a uh, cent it calculates automatically I don't know how somehow it calculates the center of the of the node. So as you can see the fuse node is the node that's basically our rock shape and I want to determine its center on the x and the z axis. 
So I go, I create another transform node and I will use this node to put the small sphere into the center of this rock. So I use the centroid expression and I go and I tell it like, go to the node that uh, uh, generates the shape of a rock and take its center uh, on the X axis and basically put the sphere in the center of the rock and do the same thing for z-axis but not for y-axis because well we basically know that the bottom surface of the rock is flat so our best bet is to just put the sphere just above above the ground that way it will project from this place on, uh, into all of the rock's surfaces if i will also put it in the center of the rock here it will just be put over here like a little bit higher and again a crazy shape of the rock may uh, put like imagine there will be a crevice over here and then the sphere would end up out of outside of the surface of the rock so i'm placing it just above the ground on the y axis and uh, in the center of the rock on the on the x and z axis so there you go and then i'm using the brain node just plug rock into this input and sphere into this input and it will generate this sort of uniform rocky surface so that's pretty much the biggest thing that I have figured out, and it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, the rest of the setup is very simple. I'm using another mounted node with a lot of fractal depth and small height and high frequency to create this sort of, uh, you know, small noise uh, that uh, looks like a rocky surface. And finally, what I want is to create several copies of this rock and use copy stamping to uh, generate different kinds of uh, shapes. Uh, well, first of all, just so it would be clear, uh, to generate a rock of a different shape, you simply go to the mountain node and change its offset. Oops. So, basically, if you just uh, manually manipulate the offset, it will create rocks of different shapes and sizes, like so. So, what I want to do is to create several copies of this rock and uh, make sure that this uh, parameter is different for, a, for each copy. To do that, well, first of all, I create a circle uh, that represents a surface onto which we will copy rocks and I uh, attach a scatter node to it so it basically creates several po several points on the, on the surface of the circle so these are the points onto which we will copy the rocks and of course you can uh, change the number of po uh, points uh, like uh, this parameter here is connected to this parameter over here total point count and uh, it will uh, dictate how many rocks you want uh, to be generated I think you can figure out just Mm, copy a parameter over here. So there you go, and then I'm using a copy node that basically copies all of the rocks that I have created onto the uh, points that I have generated with scatter. So now we have created the sort of cool formation. Uh, now to make sure that each rock is different, I'm using copy stamping. I won't go into too much detail about it, you can probably see it in other tutorials. Which basically what I do is tell it to stamp inputs and create a parameter that uh, that, uh, that basically PT means uh, the number of a copy. So this this is a var is, is this is a variable that I will be able to use to refer to the number of uh, to the point number onto which I'm copying the rock. So it's important because it will generate a different number for each copy. And then to access this variable, which I want to use as I said in the offset parameter over here, I'm telling it's access with the stamp expression. So I'm going to telling I'm telling it to go to the copy node and uh, take the number of the current point and basically based on that generate a random rock. And on top of that, I have added uh, a seed parameter. So basically, I have a controls node, node over here. This is a simple null node for which I have created a seed parameter, number of rocks parameter. This is just two integer parameters and the radius. This is just a convenient way to control all the parameters in one place. So I have copied a, a seed parameter like so, uh, copy copy parameter, and then I have added it over here so that every time I change the seed, it will give, generate a different shape of a, a rock. And it will. I have also pasted it over here so it generates a different seed for the position of the points. I'm generating. Basically what it accomplishes is, is that I'm generating the different forms of rocks and different forms of... Like if I would have one, only one rock, one seed would still generate the different size, of it, uh, the different shape of it, because I have pasted a seed over here. Okay, I hope it's, understand, uh, it's understandable. If you have any questions, you can just ask me in the comments and I will explain to you it in more details. So there you go, this generates the, the rocks that are copied across the circle. And finally, I am also using the same stamp uh, parameter to generate the random scale. So after the mountain node, they generate the noise. Like uh, I, I basically, after I have completed creating my rock, I am also adding a transform node, and it basically tells it, okay, it takes the take the point number, uh, the random point number from uh, the scatter, and uh, generate a random either uh, random number from zero to one to create the uh, rocks rocks of different sizes. So each copy will not only be different shape, but also different size. And finally, I add co uh, color to it and face it. It just makes sure that, you know, um, well, don't worry about it. You might not need this node, but I'm basically telling it to make sure that each face is a separate face so that when I'm rendering the rock, 
its surface will not be smooth. Like without this node, it will generate this sort of a smooth surface uh, because that's the way rendering and coding works. And this basically tells it to know, uh, like make each face separate because I'm going to use a setup for low poly uh, artwork. But you may not need this node. Anyways, so let's go through this whole thing again just to make sure that you understand the idea. We are taking sphere, uh, making adding some noise to it, making sure that its bottom is flat by uh, uh, scaling down like so with soft transform node, then we're creating a fuse node to decrease its resolution and create the sort of rocky surface. Then we are using ray node to project a smaller sphere onto the surface of this rock to have uniform nice resolution of the rocky surface. Then we are adding noise to it like so, then we are transforming it uh, to generate different size for different copy. Then we are copying it onto uh, several points generated by scatter and then we just adding color to it and finally we are creating a null node that creates controls for our setup and now we can select any number of rocks that we want to make any number of seeds and uh, the size of the formation is basically just a parameter that controls the radius of the circle so there you go i hope this tutorial was useful to you and i will see you in my next videos